Hi, Nico from VoiceFlow here. In this video, we will talk about cache or semantic cache in that case, and why you might want to use this in your VoiceFlow agent. So cache is a way to return some data that have been already generated. A good example for this is an image on a website. Cache is used a lot in networks operations or requests, for example, when, when a user on a website load images. If those images have been already loaded, there is no need to fetch those images each time again and again. That's also something that you have in your uh, browser. So if you go to a website you've already been, you have some cache and that page will load way quicker. So the thing is, when you use cache for this, the, the image you want to load is always the same. So that's easy to pre-cache or pre load um, the same image again and again. With LLM, it's a bit different because depending on use, your use case, you might want to get an already generated answer, but that same answer might not fully answer a user question, meaning that it's not a sort of an FIQ thing where you are on a website and you have pre-made question and answer. You click on the question that might fit what you're looking for, and you get an answer based on this. But in the LLM or using an LLM in your agent, user will ask the same question in different ways, but still you want to return kind of the same answer for that because the answer is the same. But you also want to provide a more uh, customized answer, meaning that even for a very similar question, you want to be sure that the answer is correct. So what's the Eiffel Tower? size, for example, or how tall is the Eiffel Tower will give you a very specific answer. How tall is the Toronto Tower will give you or should give you another specific answer. But those two questions are very similar. The only difference is Eiffel and Toronto, Eiffel Tower, Toronto Tower. Everything else is the same. So most likely if you do a search for this, even using a vector database, you will have a higher similarity in this, but you don't want to return the Eiffel Tower response for the Toronto Tower it makes no sense. So this is what we're going to cover today. And for this, we are going to use Upstash, which is a serverless data platform and most specifically the vector database that they provide here. They do have a free plan. So for this demo, that should be more than enough. We are going to set up everything all together. We will go over that project and we will run a test. Let me explain the project first. So this simple project will capture user question, check in our vector database if we have an already generated answer that can match that question. We will check the score for that return answer. You can think of this as a chunk in here, the uh, chunk score. And we have two choices here or the score is higher than the value we want, and then we will use the cache, or it's lower and then we need to generate an answer for that question. Thing is, we, we also want, want the benefit from it. And here in that case, the benefit will be, well, if we don't have that answer already uh, generated, we are going to do this using GPT-4.0, which is a, a more advanced model. But we will save that so that will not be lost. We will, are going to save that into our vector database. And if we already have a match with a higher score, then we will use this, but we will not throw that answer to the user or share that directly with the user. Instead, we still want to do an LM pass. Remember, we want to be sure that what the answer we're going to provide is a perfect fit for that user question. But in that case, we don't need uh, a fancy LLM model. We can go with the 3.5 turbo, which is the cheapest one, because we are passing as a context, we are passing the cache. So even if we are generating a new answer by already filtering what the context is, we'll avoid hallucination. We don't need to do rewrite correctness kind of thing. And mostly we don't need to use a, a, a more powerful LLM here. Again, this GPT 3.5 Turbo will do the job. So 
and this will also avoid us to use like a very large prompt with some rules and some, like again, hallucination check and, and all that. So now that we know how this agent will work, we need to create that vector database and an index for that. So this is my previously made database. Let's create a new index and call that cache demo. For the embedding model, you can test multiple model here. Feel free to, again, test the, the one that works best for you. My previous one was based on the large. I will use the based one. The difference will be the time that will be needed to do the embedding and quality as well. But it also impact the dimensions here. You can see the base is 768. If you go for the large, that dimension is higher. So let's do base next. So the free plan for that, create. And now what we've got is an endpoint and a token. And that's well enough uh, for us to use in an API step in our project. Talking about API, let's see what they're sharing in their documentation and what endpoints we will need for this to work. So we are going to use the query data. We are not passing any vectors here. We're not doing the embedding on our end. So we want to use the query data and passing text. Query will use the user question and return the best results. We will limit this to one. Uh, so you can see here, and that's also a mandatory one. So that is the question. Top K will be, can be up to 10. We just want, at least in that demo, we just want one. Uh, obviously you can change that and, and mix multiple answers as a context. So that will depend of the quantity uh, and the quality of, um, of those answers that you are using in, in the vector database. But ultimately, if you have uh, a lot of answers uh, in your database, you might want to use a bit more than just one and pass those X top K to the context. Include metadata, yes, we want that default to false. So we are going to fork that to true. And this is because the metadata will be the question and the answer, and we need to get the answer. We don't need vectors in there. And the other one will be the absurd. But again, we are not absurding vectors. We are absurding data. And this is whenever we use the LLM to generate an answer, then we also want to pass the question and the answer in the metadata object. We'll need to create an ID and we will use JavaScript for that. And that's pretty much it. So you can see we have specific endpoint for that, absurd dash data and query dash data. So if we go to the product or the agent here, we can see query dash data. That's kind of the search. And this one is the absurd dash. Data. I'm using variable here because this is a handy way to update this endpoint as well as the token. Here I'm on a very simple demo, but you can see this running into a way larger agent in multiple workflows or as a component here, if I select this and, and convert that to a component, I can reuse this. And obviously you don't want to have to go over all those workflow, select each of those and like manually change the endpoint or the token. So we are using variable and because of, because we are using variable, we want to set those variable at one in one place. So anytime we want to change anything or something in there that will be reflected on every step using those variable in our agent. You can use the set step for that. You can use a set in the beginning of your home flow and populate this with the value for those variable, but we can do, we can just click here on the variable. So let me copy that endpoint, click on the variable. And you can see here, we have a default value. So let's pass that new endpoint here and let's do the same for the token. There we go. And doing so, I've updated this, but also, also this one. So now you can see how useful it is when like multiple um, API step using the same variable. Okay. I think that's pretty much it. We've seen everything here. So let's run the test. The first one will most likely return zero because our index has just been created. So total is the full tower. So we should get a zero for the score and zero for the cache. We are using LLM and we get 
are responsible. So this is GPT-4.0 answering that how tall uh, is the FL Tower question. And as you can see, successfully triggered that API step. So obviously now if I say what the FL Tower size score is higher than, I think I've set the score to dot 86. We'll be able to check that variable value after that. But because we have, we have a higher score here, we don't need to generate that response again using that more expensive LLM. Instead, we are using the cache and we are passing this to our AI stack or actually this. And this is what we got from that GPT 3.5 turbo response. Now, what if I say, how tall is the Toronto tower? And as I was explaining, this use case is very interesting for those kind of things, because if I do a simple search, because that's the only change here, most likely we will get the full tower response, but we don't want to return this as a cache response, because that will be wrong. That will not be uh, related to the Toronto. If I run this, you see that the score is lower, still a good score, but it's lower than our, I think at 86. And instead of throwing back that Eiffel Tower response, we are using LLM. And then we got the right answer. So now we are talking about the uh, CN Tower in Toronto. And we are saving this as well. So same thing here. What's the Toronto, Toronto Tower size, for example? Because we've already generated this, now we should be able to use the cache, which is the case, and got a response. So that's how we are using vector DB to use uh, cache, but not cache as just cache. It's mainly do a search, get the already generated answer as a context, populate that with within that AI response step using a, a cheaper model, because then we don't need to go too deep. We already have that answer. We just want to rewrite or reformat that in, if that makes sense. So the only thing I wanted to share with you is that check score variable is, let me just, is set to, yeah. Okay. Dot 86. That's why uh, the 85 wasn't triggering the cache, which was great because Otherwise we will have the full tower answer for the tower, but yeah, that's, that's the, the cache or to use cache in your agent, how to use or reuse an already generated answer with a more powerful model, but also a more costly model with a cheaper model to get, to still get great responses. That's it. Hopefully that was a useful video for you guys and uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.